It's Python and hardware time. Okay, this week, Lady it uh, I got a couple things. Yep. Um, so CircuitPython 8 is released. Yeah. What should people know or do about CircuitPython? What's the big what's um, the big thing if they want to The big push is expressive support and uh Pico W. It's now released, it's pretty stable. Tell us if there's any bugs you find. Um uh it does resize partitions for some things. So if you've been using early release candidates or betas, uh, check the notes as a warning. It tells you, hey, if you're using these boards, we resize the partitions. Um, a lot of it is because we added so much stuff that we had to make more space for firmware. So just make a backup of the code that you have running on your CircuitPython device. Um, if so, not a big deal, but uh, it's ready for people to try out. We tend to do an 801 pretty quickly, you know, because when we do a release candidate, uh, you know, people use them, but then when you actually release release, that's when people start using them in, in you know, it's the default. And so uh, we're gonna get a lot more bug reports. And so we'll fix those. And you'll see like an 801, 802 uh, come out pretty quickly. But um, that said, you know, please do update your boards. Uh, I've been using eight, it's been great. And uh, we're on our way to nine, which will have some um, stuff like maybe USB host, maybe yeah. high speed uh, chips, maybe um, more native display support. We'll see what's up. Yeah, we were talking about like, how do we do things like non net connected machine learning? Uh, you know, as we as the chips get more powerful, so we have lots of roadmap plans. But um, everything's out in the open. You can actually even check out our uh, Circuit Python 2023 some repos for some of the stuff that we we want to do. Uh, I'm still looking forward to like having lots of video things. Yes, that's that's one of the things. I'm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like art on screens. Um, so the next thing, um, of course, you know, check out the newsletter. It's adafruitdaily.com. It's a completely separate site. We do not harvest your emails or anything. That's why we made a separate site. We did not want it connected to your store experience in any way. Um, but uh, what I wanted to do this week was uh, we get asked all the time, why don't why doesn't Adafruit have a, a board comparison guide uh, with all your stuff? And the thing is, there's there's so many people that are that's what they're doing. They're making comparison guides like Make does it. And then this one uh, came out. This is from um, EitherWay.io. And um, this is one of the ones that we got asked to do, and it's just like, I'm just gonna point people there. So it's the ESP32 buyer's guide, different chips, firmware sensors. And there's a couple of things that, I mean, you get asked this a lot. So I figured like this could be like one, which are the best ones to run something like CircuitPython or MicroPython. But what are the things to look out for with like the differences with ESP8266, ESP32, ESP32? It's very, like, it gets confusing, especially with some of the, the names of these. Mm -hmm. So uh, you saw this yeah. uh, chart, what, or the, what do you think of it? Well, I think you know it's a good it's a good overview. Um, you know, I think that there's a couple of assumptions that they're making, which is that you're you're not necessarily using it with um, Python, um, and also you know they looked at technical specs and not necessarily what the SDK support is for them. So, for example, they're like, oh, we recommend the C3. It's like, well, the C3 is really cheap, but um, it also doesn't have um, as much support. And also just a native USB, so they're like use just go straight to the S3. But you know we've we've seen some more bugs with the S3 that are still being worked out because it's quite new. Um, I still really like the S2. Uh, I think it's really good. The USB A266 definitely don't use it anymore. Like really, it's not a good idea. If you absolutely need something that cheap, the C3 is a good alternative. But other than that, I'd say the ESP32 Classic is still you know very popular. A lot of code support for it. After that, you know the S2 is very good. S3 is kind of new but i feel like it's getting more and more stable um and then the c3 which is really bare bones so you know they, they didn't it's not they didn't pick these but um i have slightly different reasons for me it's not just hardware price it's um am i seeing a, a stable idf experience with it yeah so if um because it is confusing because and i think a lot of folks are still yeah when they hear esp they, they're thinking of like the 8260 the, the like the first round yeah yeah out. Yeah, don't um, use the first the two sixty six. That's basically the best suggestion that they had. Yeah. So if someone right now, um, oh, by the way, they have a neat comparison table. Let me uh, go to this. So you could, it's on GitHub. So this just means like I, I actually like that they did this because other people can contribute to it, and other folks have forked it, and then there you can see the revisions. We do this with some of our stuff, like our um, uh, we did a circuit Python micro Python thing on GitHub. We also did a um, we have our awesome feather. Um, and we have um, a few other things. We have all awesome CircuitPython. But I like this because this is going to change change over time. Mm -hmm. But if someone was like 
okay, I just want to have something that kind of does everything. I plug it in USB, it works. Um, I can run CircuitPython on it. I can do, um, I can get started really fast, but then I can do some stuff. Which which board should do you think that is a good? I think the S two is a good one. I think the S two. I mean, like I really feel like they're very stable. Um, I mean, if if you're absolutely beginner, beginner, you know, the ESP thirty two, the original has just the most broadband support. But for the good experience, I think the ESP thirty two S two, like I mentioned, is okay. is the best. All right, family. And I really appreciate they chose uh, some of our boards for this. Yeah. The Cutie Pie ESP thirty two C three Wi Fi Dev board and the Adafruit ESP thirty two S three Feather. Um, Check it out. Yeah. Um, good, good, good uh, guide for folks who want to choose. The other thing that's kind of nice is like if we did a guide, we would probably like, well, here's our board. It's really hard to keep track of everyone else's. So I like it when someone else. Yeah, it's just independent third party. Like, yeah. we didn't pay them. We didn't send them anything. They just, um, they just. Yeah. Kind of get... And like if we did a guide of just like which board to pick, I think it would be suspect. Like, well, we think our boards are really good. We're like, well, yeah. Of course you do. You're right for it. So, anyways. Um, so do check that out, and um, I think if you want to run Python on hardware, this is a good place to start. And that is this week's Python on hardware news. Don't forget, go to Adafruit Daily, delivered to your inbox every single week. And special thanks to Anne, who does an amazing job. And then Anne sent a hug report. We do that for our weekly all-company meeting to Dan, who always proofreads. Thank you, Dan.